and talk about mules and donkeys. Who is we? Well, we is me and Steve Edwards. So I am Dave, and this here is Steve. And uh, yeah, we just love talking mules and donkeys, and we're so glad that you're here uh, hanging out with us a little bit today. It is a special day before Thanksgiving episode. We get one of these every single year, and this is this year's day before Thanksgiving. Steve, what are you and Susan, what's on the docket for tomorrow for Thanksgiving? Well, my granddaughter flew in from Michigan yesterday. This is Nika. She's 22. I can't believe it. How about that? Anyway, <laughs> uh, she flew in, and we're going to be spending the next 10 days with her. We're going to show her around Arizona and go eat some turkey tomorrow with some other family and this sort of thing. But most of all, I'm happy to see you. You were pretty puny the last time I saw you. That uh, that covert bug took a bite of you, did it? Yeah. So the so folks who uh, hang out with us every single week, um, they know that last week we had a kind of a last minute cancel, and I had been uh, last week at the end of or two weeks ago at the end of our broadcast, I started to feel a little bit sick, so I stayed home for, uh, Thursday, Friday, uh, and then rested through the weekend. Well, come around on uh, Tuesday of last week. Um, still wasn't feeling great, went and got tested, and sure enough, had that COVID-19, and now it's made its way through our entire household. I am home right now. You can't see it, but behind this sheet right here, behind this screen, it, I'm in my bedroom. We're doing we're doing 2020 working from home right here. So, uh, so yeah, it was not very... It was not very fun, but I'm feeling a lot better now. And I told you yesterday, we were talking, I was like, yeah, I'll be good to go. You're like, oh, oh okay. So yeah, it, it didn't really hit me as bad as it had hit others. But you know, when you got those fevers, it's not, not really fun at all. But glad to be back up and running. And we've got some, uh, we've got quite a few questions from the last uh, two weeks that we're gonna get to today. So I say we should go ahead and just start welcoming folks and uh, get right to it. What do you say? Get her done. Let's, yes, sir. Let's get her done. All right. So we've got Roger watching. And uh, well, I need to say this: if this is your first time ever watching, grateful that you're here. Thanks for joining us. Uh, there's three things that we ask: is the first is that um, put your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather's like in the comment section. I was about to start reading that, but I needed to make sure that I told everyone. So put your name, where you're watching from in the comment section. That's the first thing. The second thing that we ask everyone to do is to ask any and every mule question you got. And if you're thinking, oh, they've answered this one before, or oh, this is a stupid question. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. How it works is you ask the questions and we answer them so you can get out there and get results. And if you're asking the question, there's a good chance somebody else is asking that exact same question. So ask any and every question you can. And the third thing is that you like and share the broadcast. So if you're on Facebook, click that like button and share it with somebody else. And if you're on YouTube, click the like button and then click that subscribe button so every time we go live, you get a little notification from us directly to you so that uh, you can uh, keep, in, keep up with all of the latest stuff we go live with. So. With that said, we've got Roger watching in upstate New York. He says it's drizzling. We've got Eileen watching, uh, sunny and 45 degrees here in Nebraska. We've got Laura watching from Ontario, uh, Canada. Having, have a good Thanksgiving. That's right. Yeah, we do have that Thanksgiving right here in, uh, let's see, I need to get my... There we go. Gone International. Got the glockenspiel there. Gone International. We do have Thanksgiving coming up tomorrow. Thank you, Laura. Uh, we've got D watching. Thanks for getting my new downhill pad to me so fast. Anxious to try it out? D in Camp Verde. D, I'm sure your buddy is anxious for you to try that out as well. Um, we've got Jan watching all the way from Cave Creek. Happy to hear that you're feeling better. Not as happy as I am to report that I'm feeling better. And then finally, so far, we've got Yolanda taking us international all the way from the Netherlands, making sure that our European friends know all about the good news of the mule and the donkey. So let's get into our first question today. This one is, uh, we got a lot of questions about feed. This one's uh, from Susie. Uh, she says, thanks for taking time to help out me and my mule. I have two questions. First, is 
is I change to Tef grass every two to three years for PM feed. Just started riding again. My mule is not herself. Too hot. Can Tef do this? Make my mule too hot? Second question. My mule listens to leg commands, side passes back. So I'm happy with her. We mostly just trail ride, but have used the same bit for 20 years. I think it's called a Tom Thumb, but now that she's about to become a firecracker since I started riding her again, should I change to your trail rider bit? Thank you, Susie. Yeah. The Tom Thumb's not my happy bit. Um, that and there's a couple others too, but here's the problem. The Tom Thumb, you're always putting pressure on the tongue all the time. So it's a snapple bit, and when you pull, pull back on the levers, it pushes pressure on the tongue. And we want to get away from tongue pressure. After uh, they've had six months of foundational training with the snaffle bit and finish bit, you want to be done with any type of, of um, snaffle bit. In other words, any type of communication that puts pressure on the tongue. Now, my uh, trail rider bit has a port in it, and that port comes up off the tongue, but it whisks the roof of the mouth, and that's what we're looking for. We want to get easier on the mule and donkey, not heavier, and the snaffle bit is an extremely, extremely heavy bit. It should be used for building a foundation or fixing a problem, but that's it. After six months of foundation training, no more snaffle bit. Now, the feed, okay. Folks, hay is not hay. You can call it whatever you want to call it, orchard or tiff or timothy, any of it, okay? Yes, it is a form of hay, but what time of the year was it cut, all right? If it was cut in the spring of the year, high sugar, you're going to have mules that want to climb the side of a wall, all right? And that's fine if you got work for them to do, but you're plodding along and enjoying the day, wanting to trail ride, you don't want to have to hold on to a loose cannon, and that's what you got. So here's the thing. Yes, you're feeding tiff. What time of the year was it cut? That's really important. That's why I tell everybody, I know it's hard to do. Buy your feed for a year so that you have consistency in the feed. That's the great thing about feeding the pellet. That pellet is cooked down. All the vitamins and minerals are put into it. And you've got consistency if you buy a bag in May or if you buy a, a bag in January is consistent. That is why I uh, was part of helping developing the Lake and Light uh, with Chuck, uh, Chuck uh, Lakin and I yeah. uh, 25 years ago. But anyway, there you are. Hay is not hay. And, and folks, when you see a change in your mule or your donkey's attitude, go to feed first. Okay? Go to feed first. Make sure the feed's right. And if the feed has got a problem, then you may have to go to teeth and this sort of thing. But it's always feed. Awesome. Well, that's a good, uh, that's a good word right there. Go to the feed. And uh, we're going to go back to see who else is hanging out with us right here. We've got uh, uh, Cowboy Ken from Connecticut. Raining, 50 degrees and dark. We're glad that you're here. It's starting to get dark a little bit earlier here. we we'll go for a couple of couple minutes earlier but uh it's all good david pingelli glad to see you guys not as glad as we are to be seen ain't that right steve coffee time david coffee time, coffee time. get y'all some come along coffee i'll put a link in the comment section we've got alicia rose hey y'all from colorado winter is here it sure is we've got uh sabine from ontario canada we've gone international again myra is watching happy to join you today a beautiful day in ojai california doing a lot better with gracie making progress now that she's not getting extra supplements take good care and happy thanksgiving awesome glad to hear it thanks myra let's get to our next question from the day and of course if y'all have any questions put them in the comment section uh, this one comes from katie she says hi steve my two-year-old donkey keeps biting me and uh, he bites the lead rope he bites the farrier the hitching trail if I turn my back on him he puts ears flat and tries to bite me he attempted to kill two of my sheep I put in the paddock with him very nasty donkey nothing nothing seems to be working I am 72 years old do you think I should sell him and try with an older donkey a two-year-old is going to be teething Biting is not a good thing. If you want to see me come unglued, have one bite me. I will come really close to shooting one. That's vicious. Here's the thing, folks. 
mules and donkeys, uh, they bite, they kick, they push you around. It's their way of saying, do this or do that. And it's usually their way of saying, move out of my space. So if they bite you, you know, it's very well could be, move out of my space. If they bite you, uh, I don't like that farrier. So, okay, if we got a biter and, and, uh, and I'm 71 years old, uh, I know what I would do. I'd be whaling on that thing. And I mean whaling. Listen, a, 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 a lead mare, if a young colt bit her, she would bury it to the ground. I guarantee you, she would be stomping, kicking, biting. It would be, it would be tough on, on, uh, on that young one, you know? And, and, but that's, hey folks, that's part of the equine world is, is if, they, if they need to line something out, they don't know to yell and say, hey, stop that. No, they, they kick or they bite or they push around. So yes, if you've got a two-year-old uh, that's, that's being that tough, get you an older mule. Awesome. Uh, next question. This one comes from uh, Sabine. She says, my daughter rides an English tack and uses French link bit. Is there a better option? Her mule, Cletus, is okay, but I think there might be something better out there for her. Yeah. Well, you know, again, we're talking all um, gear that was designed for a horse, not a mule. You've got different pallets. You have different bone structures. And... You know, folks, you're doing okay with what you got. Okay. But you've got a, a Lexus, a Maserati there that is just waiting to be show its full potential. And if you use the right communication devices, you cannot believe how much happier it is. Now, when you're riding the English saddle, you're riding in one cinch. Look where the saddle is, sitting on top of the scapula. Not good, okay? And then the bit you're talking about, that's a real heavy bit going deep into the mouth. And so it's, it's, you, you talk about a mule with a longer head and a whole different palate. So you're communicating, but you can be doing a lot better with a proper bit. There you go. Uh, we've got an article on the website. Matter of fact, folks, if you have not been to MuleRanch.com and checked out all of the free resources we have there, you ought to do it. Um, we've got uh, an article that is Mule Bits, Everything You Need to Know. So we talk about the progression of the bits. We talk a little bit about hackamores as well because um, folks ask questions about those. So I'm going to put a link in the comment section to um, the article Mule Bits, Everything You Need to Know. And this will really give you... Uh, insight into okay what bit should I be using for what job um, and where they're at in their training uh, keep and moving on we've got James watching saying happy Thanksgiving hey Richard Matthews captains there good afternoons to Dave and Chaplain Steve we've got uh, Armo from Brazil God bless you that means we have gone international again good to have you here Arma Armeo um, the next question that we got this one um, uh, this one comes from Kim she says just very simply looking for help with a bridle to help my mule team not run off well if the bridle is part of the problem uh, the bit is the the next part of it and then let's go back to the foundation training when I start a team or a driving mule or donkey in the harness, I start them always without blinders. I want them to see a full 360 around. I want them to hear sound and be able to look over their shoulder and say, hey, that right there is a caribou. Oh, that right there is a bear. They want to be able to see that stuff, all right? And so without with blinders, they can't see it and they hear the noise and don't know that there's a caribou back there or there's a bear over here and so they take off running light because of fright so build a new foundation what you're going to need to do i would start out you by using my mule riders martingale on a sur single the problem with folks the biggest problem that we have with animals running off is they don't have respect for the bit that you have i had a lady tell me earlier today she says well what the what the donkey people are telling me is that when my donkey runs off, just let it run until it stops. It won't, it won't go far. And I said, what happens if it runs out in the street 
or, or what happens if it runs through a fence? Or what happens if it runs over top of a cliff? No, no, no. When I pick up on them reins, I want something called stop right now. Now, when you all put your brakes on in your car, do you go ahead and just let it just stop whenever it wants to? No. You want to stop at the stop sign. Stop. So when you pick up on them reins, boom, you're going to stop. So go back to your to your teams. Teams, riding mules, riding donkeys, all of them. The biggest problem with our with our mules and donkeys today is they do not have respect for the bit, mainly because we're using horse bits and we're using horse techniques. Different palate is important. So what would I do with this team? Number one, I would float the teeth. Get the teeth floated first. Get the mechanical out of the way. Next thing I would do is I would put them in a sur single with my mule riders martingale and turn them loose out in the pen and I would... Uh, I would let them learn to respect that bit. But let me back up. I said, I got ahead of myself there. Actually, you want to take and adjust a rope halter, and you want to use the come along hitch, and you want to do groundwork first. Get the groundwork done, because here's the thing. When you communicate to a mule or donkey, you want to start with the nose. Turn right, turn left, stop, stand there. With the nose first. Don't do that. Boom, boom, boom. Do that. Come along, you know. So we start with ground communication, and then we go into sur single, and then we go into a double twisted wire full cheek bit. You only use a full cheek bit when you are driving. Period. Not for riding. Uh, and then you go on from there into your Liverpool bits and this sort of thing. Awesome. Uh, I went ahead and I sent a message back there to Kim. So, Kim, if you have any other follow-up messages, just let us know. Happy to help you. Um, let's see here. Back over on – I have a feeling we're going to ha not have as many people today just because we're everyone's gearing up for the holidays. But we're grateful uh, that we've got, uh, we've got everybody else who is here hanging out with us. Let's take a look at our next question. Uh, this one comes from Cheryl. says, hey, Steve, I bought all your tack and all is well. Well, if that isn't – just something to make your day I don't know what is thank you I have been question I have a question regarding my mule we've been riding her with the trail riding bit I decided to revert back to the training double twisted bit I have a pony sitting in the barn and all the mule wants to do is go back to the barn to be with the pony we've heard that before so if I want her to go out into the field to the right I pull the rein pull the right rein she turns her head to the right and she walks sideways to the left is it walking into the shoulder then walks back to the barn what do I do okay number one folks let me get this into your head, and here you see it. Shetland pony. Mule won't leave without the Shetland pony. And I was talking to, I've talked to people every week about this same thing, but you do not need a pasture mate. You, you folks, you're the one that bought it. You're the one that's spending time with it. You are the herd leader. You know, it's frustrating when you can't go somewhere without your goat or your Shetland pony. So let's go back. When you pull on the right, they are going to run through their shoulder to the left. You don't pull the opposite way. They're going to the left. Take that left side. See, you see my hands here? Take that left side. Turn up on your hand. Take that shoulder away. And at the same time, use your spur on the left-hand side. That's what you do, okay? At the same time. And that tells them, don't go to the left, go back over here. So see what well, folks, this is what happens. The mule is running off to the left, you're pulling to the right because you want to go to the right, but what the mule does is brace into that, uses his shoulder. That's why I don't disengage hindquarters, I disengage shoulders. So you take that shoulder and you turn it up like this and you pull on it, pull it towards your solar plexus, pull on it. Tip that mule's nose like this, You'll see that shoulder come up, that shoulder will come up, and then you can go the direction that you want to do, all right? Go the direction you want to do, and then go on. Now, if he does it again, you're going to go right, left, right, left, right, left, really hard, really tough, really fast, right, left, right, left, right, left. You're in, in, in essence, you're saying, listen to me, listen to me, and then take the left-hand rein, 
and bring it up and bring it over. Practice at home first, folks. You know, practice at home. Do this at home before you get out on the trail. I don't know what happened to you, Dave, but you went kind of dark. Did it get? Yeah. Oh my goodness, it did. So I'm I'm operating from home today, and I'm not with my normal setup, and I don't know what happened. I'm still here. It's just a I, little, I see a white boy in there. Yeah, right. There's a white boy in there, definitely. Um, I'll see if I can figure it out while we answer this next no question deal. here. Um, Carolyn says, my mule gets nervous and walks as soon as I get on. Her head is up. Her ears are back. Should I leave her walk? Should I leave her walk or try and make her stand? Make them stand. 80% of our equine accidents is getting on and getting off. So here's what we want to do. We're going to take the, you're going to take the snaffle bit. Snaffle bit, and you're going to have in your left hand, you're going to have your hand on the horn, and you're going to take that horn, and you're going to shake this thing, I mean, so hard you knock the mule off his feet. Then he's going to plant off four feet, because the mule does not like to be able to control his feet. And then when you do that, you got your left rein here, and you're kind of tipping the head just a little bit, put your foot in the stirrup, and you climb in the saddle. And this is where people make mistakes. Two reasons, or a mule wants three reasons, actually, main reasons, a mule wants to move. Number one, we taught him that because as soon as we get in the saddle, we go. No, folks, get in the saddle, sit there, take a couple of deep breaths of air, say, man, isn't this nice to sit on this mule? Back up a couple of steps, go to the right. Maybe back up a couple of steps, go to the left. Have a controlled departure, okay? So here's the next reason. The next reason is when when you go on, when you don't, when you get on, you did not cue the mule by shaking the horn. Cue the, teach them to learn to stand still by shaking the horn. Period. Now here's the third part. You you're holding the reins too tight. Hold them loose, so they're kind of hanging loose a little bit. As soon as you pick them up, you'll have them. But have them loose enough that, that it'll work. And here's the last one. It's usually because you're using a horse saddle and you're putting pressure upon the sixth and seventh rib. So when you go to get on, it puts pressure on that and makes him uncomfortable. And that's what happens a lot. Okay? Now remember, folks, how do you get on? Watch the old westerns. Watch John Wayne climbing the saddle. Or, or you know, Bud Johnson or uh, any of those old guys. Watch them. How do they get in the saddle? You don't see their saddles rolling. How do they get in the saddle? Hand on the horn. Hand on the mane. Climb in the saddle. Here's what we do today. We got our hand on the cantle, hand on the horn, and we roll the saddle over. My saddle pulled over when I got on. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Saddle's fault. No. What's the fault? Me. I got in the saddle incorrectly. Now, you watch old, uh, what was his name? Eric yep. Palmer. Climbs right in the saddle. I don't know if you got that picture there or not. I'm putting it up. Eric climbs in that saddle. Notice the cinches are hanging down. Now, yes, Eric's a good mule man. Real good one. Yes, he's a good mule man. And, but that still doesn't change things. When you get in the saddle properly, that saddle should stay right into place. I just put a link. Oh, in. awesome. We can show up picture yeah. Toby. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I'll find that one too. I just put the video in there uh, where folks can watch it on YouTube. Um, Eric uh, climbing on and, and uh, it's titled, can your, can your saddle do this? And yeah, the cinches are just hanging there. He climbs in, doesn't move. And uh, that's yep. what you want. Uh, next question. This one comes from Myra. Good to have you here, Myra. Please explain why the full cheek double twisted wire bit isn't recommended for riding, but is okay for driving. It's too much pressure. The idea here is you've got a set of long lines for driving. There's a lot of leverage, a lot of leverage with all those long lines. And if we have just a regular O-ring snaffle, we tend to pull the snaffle through their mouth because you remember 
You want the snaffle to hang down. You want them to pick up and pack that bit, not create one wrinkle, two wrinkles. So with a beam loose like that and having the long leverage of those long lines, when you go to pick up on that bit to drive your mule to pull it off the left or right, that full cheek hits, hits on the side of the face and keeps you from pulling it through his mouth. Now, in a riding saddle, that's way too much pressure upon that mule. He'll go to shaking his head and start jumping like a jackrabbit, like a, like a kangaroo. So you don't want to be in that position. I've been there, not a good place. I uh, just found the uh, just found the video of Toby, and so I've got uh, got that going in the comment section. So when I say, folks, if you're watching, when I say I'm putting it in the comment section on YouTube and Facebook, uh, folks will type in their questions. Well, in that same place, you type in your questions, you'll see everybody else's comments. That's where I'm putting it. So anytime I say I'm going to put this in the comment section, that's what I'm talking about there. Uh, next question, this one comes from Emily. Emily asks or writes, I am a longtime equestrian and after much research, I recently became an enthusiastic mule owner. All right, there we go. My mule is an excellent specimen, 14 years old, brave and bold. He loves to go. He has been trained in Western show and trail, has been hunted off of, neck reins and rides bridleless, very responsive to my legs. My goal is to do trails with him and possibly polo, which is a discipline I currently do on my horse, uh, on horseback. May may some showing may do some showing as well, though it's not really my thing. I would just like to show off what a great mule he is. You're not the first. Everybody loves doing that. They get these awesome mules. Want to show them off a little bit? Can't say I blame you. He has had some time off before I got him, about a year or so of sitting, and seems a little rusty. Plus. I feel like I don't know all his cues, and he doesn't know me well yet either. For refreshing a well-trained mule and building a lifelong relationship with him in a structured way, is there any resource that would be really helpful out of all the books and information uh, that you have? Uh, really hoping to build a lot, lifelong partnership with my mule and do many long trails with him. So, we've got a new enthusiastic mule owner just wanting some basics. Uh, Steve, what should we do to help her build and uh, bond with this animal? Ground communication. Always, folks, if you got your meal standing around for a while and you want to go trail riding, just don't go out there and throw a saddle on him. I don't, you know. I did when I was younger, and I got 32 broken bones and two replaced hips to show you it's not the best way to do it, all right? So let's go back. Put the come along hitch on him. Sit and watch my video. Watch that buckaroo cowboy working that mule around. See how things are going. Do your groundwork first, okay? Then after groundwork, you know, I take even Stacy as good as she was. That mule was near the, about the most perfect mule you could get. And my wife rode her two, three times a year, you know, uh, <laughs> and, and, and enjoyed her. So here's the deal. Build a foundation on the ground on the ground and and that's a, that's the best way to start I, I cannot tell you how important a, a ground communication is and this is just one example yeah and so when we talk about ground communication um, folks folks want to know um, when when do I graduate from ground communication when when do I not have to worry about that anymore and I can just start riding Steve uh, no such thing no such thing no such thing as graduating from doing ground communication. You cannot do enough of it, okay? Uh, and and, and it, it teaches you to be refining with your hands. You can feel it with your hands when you're picking up on that come along rope and getting the mule to come around. You can see the mule moving nice and quiet and come around. When you can get to the point that you can almost whisper to that mule move to the right or left then you might want to think about not messing with the ground communication but stick with it ground communication doing your come along work is your going to be the best for you but most of all it's going to be best for the mule because you're learning to communicate quietly and easily with your hands remember that come along hitch it communicates to the nose underneath the chin 
back behind a pole. It, it infuriates me to see people using chains. And, and unfortunately, when you go to your NASMA shows or your AMA shows or any of your shows that's in that structure, they want you to use a chain for your, uh, for your uh, uh, different groundwork as far as sometimes you're, uh, you're showing your meal uh, and you, and you want to show its confirmation, this sort of thing, or sometimes you're doing it to set it up for you yourself, but they don't want you to use a rope halter, which is way easier. Nope, they want you to put chains on there and, and, and tear up all these nice little uh, nerves underneath here, okay? So it, that, that right there is cruel. That's extremely cruel. That and a nylon halter. Those teaches more, more bad problems than Carter has peanuts. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, let's see. We got CT watching over on YouTube. Cheryl uh, watching from wet weather in Washington. We've got Naomi watching. Uh, good to have you here, Naomi. Uh, Burson is watching from Farmington, New Mexico. 48 degrees, sun shining, and enjoying the show. Good to – well, we're – hey, we're glad to put it on here for you. Glad you're here too. Hey, hey Dave, I think that's Naomi. I think she's the one that bought my mule head spurs. Hey, Naomi, is that you? Uh, you're a say, you're is how the last name shows up in YouTube. Sometimes folks use it. Is that is that her? It, it sounds like her, but I remember that Naomi part because that's a good biblical name. All right, very good. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Rip is watching just in from a five-hour ride. I think you are living the dream, my friend. Uh, let's see. Uh, Burson says, I have an eight-month-old mule, Tigger. I like that name. Uh, I have trained colts, but never trained a mule co colt. How long should I train each training lesson, and what are the steps I should take him through? Okay, so ground communication. Again, you're going to use the same ground communication uh, techniques as you see in that video and as you see in that ground communication program as you would on a six-year-old or a six-month-old. So the biggest thing, folks, with a colt, remember, and with a mule, period, is what they have is not much bigger than a walnut. That's the part you're training. That's the part you're trying to put all this information in. And so uh, when you're training on these colts, the biggest thing you can do is to pick up their feet and keep them trimmed and balanced. Trimmed and balanced. So that when they grow up, they're going to be straight not crooked like you see the majority of these mules. The majority of these mules are crooked in their legs because they weren't taken care of as a baby. All right. So the other thing I would do is I would use a come along hitch everywhere I went. I, I don't like to tie my babies up. It's got a good chance of pulling neck bones and this sort of thing when they pull back and get scared. I used to use an inner tube so when they pulled uh, they would pull on the inner tube. I don't do that anymore. I don't like to tie my babies up. I teach my babies to ground tie, and I put the come along hitch on, teach them to ground tie, brush them and this sort of thing without tying to a hitch and post. So biggest thing you can do, keep the feet balanced, and keep, don't ever put a time frame on your training, folks, never. Just just say to yourself, I'm gonna do three, six, nine, 12. I'm gonna do three times over this bridge, or three times going around a circle, then I'm gonna go six and nine, and then I'm done, okay? I got my foundation built, then I can go back and forth and do do add some different things to it. But never say 15 minutes and I'm done. No, when the mule, listen, this is key thing. When the mule's head is down, when he shows relaxation after a training session, he's got it. There you go. Uh, next question. This one comes from uh, Linda. Oh, actually, no. Linda's just saying hi. Hello from Linda, the mule servant, and Theo, the sweet one-eyed mule in cold, oh, yeah. rainy, rural central Ohio, moving slow after an emergency appendectomy. Well, oh, 
Ooh. Hopefully, uh, you got a nice long weekend to recover, but hopefully you can still enjoy some time with friends or family, doing things safe, keeping yourself safe there. Uh, but uh, yeah, glad that you're able to hang out with us. Uh, Naomi says, nope, it's a different Naomi. So there you go. Thanks so much, Naomi. Right. I appreciate that. Um, Steve, uh, real quick. Um, it, folks, if you have any other questions, go ahead and ask them. Uh, I've gotten, I had about six or seven that uh, we had loaded up, so I've gone through those, and we've answered everybody's questions here so far. So if you got any more questions, now's the time. Uh, we sent out an email a couple uh, last week, I think, several days ago, talking about uh, feed. Uh, Steve, just give us a couple quick things that folks need to know about feed as we're going from the fall months into the winter months, maybe not going to be riding as much, uh, maybe not going to be doing as much activity because it's a lot colder. Just give us a couple things that we need to consider, and I'm going to get a link for folks to be able to check out that video um, in its entirety. Yeah, you know, the biggest thing you can do for them is uh, keep the feed in a, in a clean, dry area. Those feed bags where you put all the feed inside the bags and then hang them up, those are great except for you don't have a giraffe to eat like this so put it down lower to where they have to get get to it that way uh they need roughage lots of roughage so feed a good quality grass hay uh is the main thing that you want to do and uh, just keep up on the vitamins and minerals and folks always salt keep salt available all the time they, they've got to have salt so that their intestines and their stomach all works correctly uh, that's the main things I would do and and be, remember folks it's really easy with a lot of moisture to get hay where it's it's got problems so clean dry hay is extremely important you know one, th and one thing Dave I'm looking for I'm yeah. looking for for a friend all right and that is I'm looking for a jack a good quality jack and and this friend of mine has got some ideas he wants to do with the jack so if anybody knows about a good quality jack send me some information i'd like to take a look at it you know and, and go from there uh there's so many jacks out there these days uh you wouldn't believe dave how many i've looked at just in the past couple months looked at somebody says boy here's a jack and he really makes good babies mm, yeah well you know there's 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 one thing folks uh making the babies another thing having the confirmation and the other thing is the key thing when i'm looking at a jack i'm looking at a jack yes disposition first confirmation second now how many real square jacks do you see next to none because their bone structure and they they don't have the hips uh, to be able to have the muscle mass to keep the back leg straight, yes, but they don't get trimmed, they don't get balanced. And folks, with your donkeys, you want to trim and balance their feet. Every six weeks minimum, they get their feet balanced and trimmed. Do they have to have shoes? Yes, yes. Listen, they get contracted heels, they get contracted heels because the moisture expanding, contracting the heat and this sort of thing, with the proper shoe on there, it keeps the foot apart, okay? So so going back to the feet, a good roughage and um, good and clean. What uh, what are your thoughts on blanketing? I got Sabine saying, first winter with our mule Cletus, what is the rule of thumb for blanketing? He came to us from Pennsylvania. Where in Ontario uh, seems some pretty cold, we see some pretty cold nights. You know, I, I have been in Montana with 20 below zero. And I've seen them mules stand out in the field, just stand there with the snow coming on top of them. I've seen them stand underneath trees and this sort of thing. I have tried blanketing them myself when I first started going to Montana to hunt and this sort of thing uh, with Jeanette Carlson of the DJ Bar Ranch. But, you know, really blanketing is going to be your choice. Uh, I personally, um, it, it's a lot of work to get them blanketed You've got to keep them in a good dry barn because once that blanket gets muddy and nasty, you've got to take it to a special place to get it clean or use a high pressure washer, yada, 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 plus drying it. So, uh, you know, that best thing you can do is feed your mule 
a good reference where it'll build its heat on, on its insides. Uh, one of the questions that uh, we had gotten quite a bit uh, in the last, I don't know, four weeks, five weeks, folks been looking at saddles and they get online and they see your standard horse saddles and then they see saddles that are labeled mule saddles and then of course they come to your saddles and um, and so what they're what they're looking for what they want to know is um, you know will your saddle fit my mule will your saddle be a good fit for my mule will it will it make them uncomfortable um, you know my mule is pretty big and I see on on the pictures that there's some small ones is it going to fit talk to me a little bit about what we want to look for when we're getting a fit for a saddle for the mule or well, donkey yeah or donkey especially the donkeys hey Dave you've got a brand new website coming up we're gonna be what putting that out next couple days yeah hopefully the next couple days I have little couple little things that I was working through and I think I've got it so it's coming Yep. So, folks, if you think this website we have now has got good information for you, wait till you see what the Guru Dave has put together, man. I mean to tell you, this site is awesome. Now, here's the biggest thing I want to tell you. I am all about teaching you, okay? And, yeah, I'd love to sell you a saddle. And, yes, I'd love to tell you all about it. But here's the thing. Dave, the Guru right here in front of us, put together this awesome almost 10 hours right yeah that's your son which son's that <laughs> i've got both so so right here on both sides is the backyard and the boys have been playing good they don't realize i'm on a call and so they're coming up to the blinds both stevie and isaac right here so no, I, I apologize they're having fun i'm trying to let them know all right hey i'm working okay buddy and he, he's just staring at me three years old <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got it's probably about six hours of straight footage um, that uh, well yeah it's it's a lot well the, here's the thing the thing Dave like you know I had a lady tell me today she says I'm, I'm having a problem setting my little pin bones are kind of giving my hiney a problem and I said are you you know it's a brand new saddle and I said have you put your feet in the stirrup yet uh oh Dave, I lost you. Am I? Can you? Are, are you there? Yeah, I, there we go. Susan just called. Susan, I'm I'm talking with Dave on the uh, talking with Dave. On Susan, the you're live. Program. You're on Facebook. You're on YouTube. You're going out across the entire world right now. Hear me, Susan? Susan. <laughs> she she got she got one moment. She heard that one say, "You're doing what?" And then she hangs up. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's out there with my granddaughter. You know, yeah. And they're shopping and doing girl things. And so she just kind of draws a blank. That's okay. I understand. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, so look, folks. When you are, when you buy a saddle, that saddle is designed to fit every butt out there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> just say it like that. Okay. And uh, here's the deal, though. If you want to make the saddle comfortable, you have to take a bottle of soapy water. Take the dish soap, put it in a spray bottle, shake it up good, and wet the back half of the fenders underneath the jockey, and then go ride. I've had people that have had, like me, had hips replaced or had a knee replacement, and so they're setting different, and they have one part of their body bothering them more than the other. Well, folks, look, when you've got an animal moving underneath you, and then you're trying to balance yourself, you're going to have a sore spot, okay? But here's the thing. Wet the leather so that it shapes to your riding. And you're going to ride a little bit different each day. So over a six-month time frame, wet it and ride, wet, wet it and ride. It just frustrates me to look at, on the Internet and see saddles that are older saddles that the, that the stirrups are on there sideways instead of like this to put your foot in, you know? Uh, and that's a saddle that's gonna hurt your back, it's gonna hurt your lower knees and this sort of thing as well. So with all the information you got out there, Dave, when we went down to the uh, Andrada Ranch, uh, we, have a, we have a 17 hand Pertron mule, and we got that little 13 yeah. and, and a half hand mule that I love, right? Don't yeah. poncho, you know? 
uh, and, and all them other mules, we put those trees on so you can see it. So it's not just the tree, folks. It's not just the tree. There's different mules, yes. There's quarter horses, there's Belgians, there's Pertrons, and all different sizes. The bone structure is the same. Muscle mass is different. That's why I've designed the skirting the way I have. That's why I put the D-rings where I have. Everything is 40 years worth of trying to figure out how to do it so that that mule is comfortable, so that that donkey is happy. Listen, you want to ride an unhappy donkey? Watch them. When they get worried about something, they just lay right down. It's almost like they stick their head in the sand like an ostrich, like nothing happened. I, I don't know anything that's going on, you know. So anyway, yeah, there we are. I'm looking forward to that website. It is going to be awesome. It's going to be great. Uh, let's see here. Yolanda is uh, saying, I recommend everyone to get real mule saddles and pads from Steve Edwards. It saves your mule's life. And you want to talk about... Um, you want to talk about abuse, you want to talk about being cruel to an animal, uh, you want to talk about damaging them and hurting them and uh, just not living with integrity, you talk about uh, getting them out there and letting them eat as all they want all day long and putting them out to pasture and not regulating their feed that's going to abuse them. That's going to abuse them on the inside. Of course, we don't see that on the outside until it's too late, but that's going to cause problems on the inside. You want to talk about uh, hurting an animal? You put a big old heavy quarter horse saddle up there that's got, what, tw 24 inch bars, whatever that standard is, and they get up there on top of the scapula, which is a bone that is like this, and then there's fibers all around the top and it keeps coming down on top, on top, that, that's abuse. Now, it, it doesn't look like abuse in terms of what we see as humans, because, you know, we, we don't see what's going on underneath. We just see, oh, no, it fits. It's on there. I'm riding. But then when you say, oh, it keeps riding up on the, it keeps moving forward. Well, if it's bugging you, imagine how much it's hurting them. So yeah. it, there, there's a lot to it that we don't see that if you don't know it, you're really hurting the animals, and, and uh, Yolanda's right. It saves your mule's life when you do things the right way. Um, we've got a question here. Over, Oh, go ahead, Steve. Go ahead. I might mention Yolanda. Uh, she wanted to know if I had any other custom bits, you know, because I'm a fool. I'm a, I'm a touch. You know how you girls like to go in and look at clothes and stuff? Well, when I see bits and spurs, I come unglued. I just got, I got to have one of those. You know? Well, Yolanda got one of my bits. And she called me and said, sent me all these videos. I wish people could see how my mule is doing. Wow, I can't believe how much difference it made. Now that bit cost a few bucks, all right? We're not gonna go into the cost, but that bit is a custom made Santa Barbara style bit. But what it does for the mule. But when people first see it, they go, ooh, ooh, them spade bits, awful bad. No, no. You know where the cruelty comes in? It ain't the bit. It's your hands. You are constantly holding on to that mule going down the road. When you're going down, we shouldn't even see your hands move. Your hands should be down and quiet. One of the things that the judges always said when I was driving my six-up team, they said, Steve, when, when we see you driving, we never see you move your hands. And they said, why? I said, I move my hands, but it's so slight that the mule can feel it. Just move my fingers around, move my hands around. Not this, not the pulling. Folks, if the cruelty is in your hands. You're constantly holding on to that mule, constantly hold on that donkey. No reason to have both hands on those reins except for if you're training. Direction and pulsion. Direct reining is for training only not for going down a trail. You're relaxed. Let your mule, let your donkey relax. If you are so uncomfortable that you got to hold on to the reins, go back and do your foundational training. Go back and get the animal to relax. That mule, he's happy, all right? He's kind of flopping his ears, but when they're really happy, them ears look like helicopter uh, uh, blades going. Well, I mean, they're really happy. They really go, you know? Um, so yeah, there you go. I, Yolanda, she, she was amazed at how that Santa Barbara style bit, uh, really done some good. It's, it's a nice bit.
Oh, they get Cholla cactus in them all the time. They got, they got, you know, we got things called wait a minute bushes, we call them. They're a cat claw. And boy, they can hang on to you. Uh, we got the jumping cactus, the Cholla cactus, prickly pear. You know, we got all those. You know, how do we handle it? We do the best we can. You know, I don't jump off and pull it out every time he hits one. Otherwise, that's all I'd be doing is walking all day long. I'm telling you, these mules get a lot of thorns in them. And so does my dogs, you know. I mean, these dogs learn that when they get a big old cactus on the front of their nose, they know how to put their paw on it and flip it off. They learn it, you know. Uh, and and I, I, there's no way to keep them from not getting cactus on them going out there, you know. And, folks, we got a lot of it. You know, if you ever want one to buck, you get a choya cactus on his belly. Woo! Man, they know how to buck. Nightmare time. Oh, yeah. Can't think of his name, Dave, but there's a guy in California that just called an order set of taps. And he said, Steve, the truth is I can take your saddle and put it on any four of my mules, and that saddle fits all four of them. He says, but here's the truth in advertising. He says, I showed a guy the other day, he says, no way that that saddle could fit all four of them mules. He said, after I was done putting it all four of them mules, I then... <coughs> <clears throat> threw the saddle on, <clears throat> I didn't cinch it up, and I climbed in the saddle. And he said, there you are. Truth in advertising, Steve, it blew that guy away. You know, that's that's funny. That's fun. There we go. Uh, folks, I apologize. So I had a, uh, if, if you're just watching, I'm working from home. I tested positive for uh, coronavirus last week, and so uh, I've been on my home quarantine, so I'm not in my normal environment. Right here, I had a three-year-old wailing away. And so I went ahead and I muted what y'all can hear. Steve could still hear my microphone, but I muted what y'all could hear and I forgot to unmute it. So you're talking, Steve, they're hearing you and then I start talking, they can't hear nothing. I, I got it taken care of. You should be able to hear me now. And the three-year-old is no longer out there. I think his mother got a hold of him. Uh, let's see here. Um, I think that's everything that we got, Steve. We, uh, we've, gone, we've gone through it all. Uh, Yolanda says, I use Neat's foot natural leather oil so she's making a comment there um uh let's see she says uh, she said what you were saying is true my mule has turned around 360 degrees with the special custom made mule bit from steve now i only have to use my pinky and legs and she loves this bit every minute of it so um there you go that's that's what you want to hear uh right here yeah the, the 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 things that make sense to us um, and, and I can say this as someone who is, I've not spent my life around animals, much less equine. Um, it, it does not make sense to me sometimes in the very beginning on, well, you know, that, that would annoy me. Well, I'm not a mule. And the mule uh, doesn't really mind it the way I would mind it. They'd be like, well, that would, that would frustrate me. Well, you know what? The mule's not me. The mule communicates differently than I do. And, yeah. um, you know, you talk about the lead mayor and, and uh, herd leadership and things like that, you know, um, it, it's different than the way humans lead each other. And so you really have to get your mind in a different frame of reference to really start to be able to respect and honor these animals and the way they communicate. Isn't that right, Steve? Yeah, that's right. You know, folks, you know, we, none of us can handle being kicked by a, a mule or a horse. None of us can handle being really bit. And, you know, but that's to them, that's just an everyday thing. That's like me tapping Dave on the shoulder and say, Dave, get over there. Yeah. You know, that's, that's part of their life. So whatever we may do, you know, uh, there's no such thing as a cruel bit. There's cruel hands. There's no such thing as, as a cruel way to ride unless you're whipping and beating on them. That's another thing. But when you use spurs, you're refining your communication. You know, I 
I used to hate these mules, you know, but now I love them. Everything goes. I, I, I don't ever offer me a horse to ride. You know, I'm, I'd have a hard time doing it, you know. By the way, I'm thinking about David Pengalli and his coffee. Yeah. Man, I, I should have I should have ordered some earlier and had it for Thanksgiving, but that's okay. Uh, if we ever get any cold days, we're still in summer, right, Dave? <laughs> yeah. Our, you know, what is, our winter months feel just about as warm to some people as their summer months do. Now, what is it, 80 out there right now? It's uh, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, be 100% beautiful degrees is what it is. That's right. There we go. <laughs> really good. All right. Well, you look, if, if folks got questions, they know they can call me. Uh, when Dave's new website comes up and and it comes up and you, you all are going, you talk about information. I mean, it's as easy as point and shoot, you know. Uh, we really want to help you. We really do. Uh, it's not. It's not a matter of selling a bit or a, or a, a spur or a saddle or something like this. That's that's okay, and then we appreciate that. But if you can treat your mule or donkey with total respect and enjoy it, you see, you you bought that mule or donkey just to go enjoy life, to forget about this COVID thing. Oh, by the way, you know that Corona beer. That, yeah, I understand, I understand that they put a lime in it to give it a nice taste. So I got this idea the other day: find somebody if you got COVID disease, find somebody with Lyme disease, you'd have the perfect. <laughs> oh, put, it, put it together. <laughs> ah, that's another story. But anyway, going up. Let's go back. So this mule and donkey keeps you from thinking about all this other garbage we got in the world. So why not treat them with a total respect? Give them a chance, and give them a chance to make a mistake, and then just show them that's not acceptable. That's not acceptable, you know. And you do it bump, bump, bump through the nose. But here we are, four o'clock, David. We got another another day going by. Huh? Yeah, we do. Okay, so I got two more questions, and then we'll call it a day. And feel uh, it. It really, you know what? It feels like the day before Thanksgiving. Just sit back, relax, enjoy. Things are slowing down a little bit. I like that all right. Legalize says, can you uh, ready train to swamp a mule to rotate, pack, and riding? I was thinking about getting two mules to go routinely, to routinely go exploring. Um, can you train to swamp a mule to rotate, pack, and riding? Yes, every mule should ride. Every donkey should ride, drive, and pack. Every one of them. Ride, drive, and pack. That's they're so versatile to do that. I can teach a donkey to drive. It'll blow you away. And I've done it one time just to show people. In less than an hour, I was driving a donkey. Well, you can ride and you can drive and you can pack. When it comes to versatility, there's nothing that they lack. Ain't that right? <laughs> uh, You're lonely. <laughs> uh, let's see. Last question here. Uh, this one's from Linda. Are there any rules in mule breeding about uh, AI or natural cover like with breed horses? Breed AI every time. Don't mess with live cover. You know, uh, you don't, it's too stressful on the mare because you got to hobble them and you got to tie them down and because they, they can rip up a jack bad, big time. I do not like pasture breeding. That's the worst breeding program in the world. Don't do that. AI will get you a, a, a far better consistency of, of impregnating a mare than anything else. AI work. There you go. You heard it first here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Terry says, thanks, Dave and Steve. We have 40 plus degrees of fog and rain here in southeast Wisconsin. Uh, Susan Henderson says, happy Thanksgiving from Pennsylvania. Legalize. This is his first time hanging out with us. Says, you guys are great, y'all. It's been fun hanging out. Uh, get yep. out there and uh, be safe, but enjoy the four-day weekend. Uh, enjoy being around your loved ones. Enjoy the food. Uh, enjoy your equine. Um, just uh, enjoy these freedoms that we have uh, in modern day. If you're here in America, enjoy the freedoms you have here. But uh, the freedom and liberty that much of us uh, enjoy throughout the world, don't take that for granted. Steve, anything you want to say before we're all done here? No, partner. Hey, I appreciate you and your family. I'm glad to know you're back to getting well again. That's a good deal. Uh, my granddaughter, Nat, 
uh, it, it went through her family. Her mom, his mom had it. Dad had it. Both of them said it was just more of an inconvenience than anything yeah. else. Um, and then uh, there, then my uh, my grandson there, Wyatt, he had a had a uh, emergency appendectomy, I think it was. So that was uh, that was quite the deal there. But anyway, happy trails. You all eat lots of turkey and uh, enjoy your family. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Last question: That's... Pumpkin or apple pie? Oh my! Yes. Yeah, that's good. All right, everyone. We'll see y'all later. Take care.